excited about bullying. There are five or so many articles explaining how each article can be touched. For the case of Uganda, everybody who tells you don't discuss is undemocratic, is a dictator, and we shall fight you. We have heard those bad messages from some politicians who said that the question on the table should only be can only be solved not through statements, not through interaction, but through iron and shedding blood. I can assure you, and I'll be part of that force which will prevent that to happen in this country. Welcome to Jikwate Ko, to Jikwata Ko. My name is Tony Geoffrey Owana, and I'm privileged tonight, like I've been alerting you, to host two very senior generals of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, who are also members of parliament of the same force. With me in studio tonight is General Eli Tumuine and General Wamara Katumba. There is, is a very long and colorful CV, which if you are careful, you will see running down in the scroll. And the issue we are going to discuss is whether that thing that is causing you a lot of hiccups in where you are now is a matter of life and death. Those conversant with the science and art of violence think that that should always be the last resort. With some of you who want to experiment with the trouble, you mm. think the best way is to start here. Mm. Unfortunately, even when you start here, you end up discussing all. The few that remain of us end up finding that discussion is the best way. Hence the subject tonight, which quotes General Tumwine as saying, whoever is opposed to discussion is the enemy of peace in Uganda. Permit me to introduce the generals. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Now, for the rest of this hour, I'm privileged to inform you that I am the one in charge. It's not every day that someone takes charge of two very senior generals, so I'm really feeling... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, oh, imagine. <laughs> but I also want to hasten to add that 32 years ago, the two generals here would now be announcing a coup. There is no other reason why they would be here except to announce a coup. This information goes to those who have been praising the peace and tranquility of Uganda before you were seven and you and Besige and Mushega and Mbabas and others came to disturb them. Welcome once again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will be coming to announce a coup. Now, everyone out there is wondering what you are going to discuss when you are supposed to be serving generals. Before I ask you to define for us the difference between partisan and participatory, let me ask the late General Ronda to give us an insight of what politics in the military in this government can mean. Take a look at General. So our undertaking to accept you here, for us, we are two, we are two. There is NIM party, and then there is UPDF. And we, we, we meet with the party when it comes to the implementation of the vision of the, of the president. And I talk about it later, that's when we meet. And we meet in many places, but one of the places we meet is here. So this place is our ideological maker. It's in Nina Gumbi. Well, I know how we had uh, done some work on Somalia, but it, it, didn't, it didn't proceed and then she disappeared. 
So it's our Mecca or, or Rome. We pay pilgrimage here. There is a moment when the party, or ourselves, will do courses here. We withdraw here and begin reflecting on what has taken us to come this far and even ponder the future. Yeah, that is uh, the late Chief of Defense Forces and former Minister of Internal Affairs. And maybe before I forget, let us also salute the memory of uh, Major General Julius Okela, whose uh, anniversary was today. And we also salute the memory of uh, Honorable Isa Chikungwe, who has also passed on. But now, that's where. Yes, and, and the, the MP for Furuhama. Yeah, there has been a series. And today we are also remembering your OB, Patrick Rwandaga. Uh, I represented you without oh. your permission, oh. so do, don't worry. By the... Uh, Mwine, permit me to start with you before I go to Jenu uh, Katumba. How do you make me comfortable by teaching me the difference between being a partisan and participating in politics when you are in uniform? Yeah. First of all, there is a big misunderstanding that soldiers, there was confusion between partisan politics and mm. politics. Mm -hmm. Right from the beginning, war, which soldiers are trained to prepare for, mm -hmm. is the highest level of politics. I repeat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. War mm. is the highest level of politics, which means that every citizen of the world is free and is part of politics. So there is no way you can separate the some citizens of any country from being part of the politics. Mm -hmm. The difference with partisan politics Partisan is when there are divisions within the country mm -hmm. with different parties, parties with their different manifestos and uh, objectives, and in a multi-party dispensation, for example, it is very clear that one party is in power, other parties which are out of, are not in power, all they are doing their whole effort why they are paid, constitutional allowed, is to get that party out <laughs> and they come in. That is when you hear opposition. That's how they understand. That is the constitutional freedom. So that you have two sides where there is one side which wants to get out of the other. Now, for the military, the politics that we defend, the politics that we participate in, the politics we are willing to die for, is the politics which says protect all yeah, Ugandans, okay. defend all Ugandans, regardless, uh, support the constitution which allows all Ugandans to participate, to politic in whichever way, in with their different parties. But for you, you avoid having to politic on any of the sides, but you defend them politicking and you also telling them that the politics of togetherness, the politics of nationalism, the politics of the constitution, the politics which unites us, the politics which defends us and provides security and stability for all. That is the politics. That's politics. Serious politics. Mm -hmm. Politics of stability, politics of peace, politics of democracy, politics of freedom of expression, politics that's the whole process, what we fought for, what we defend, what we preach, and what we are here to share with Ugandans. Yeah, but for you, General Tumwine, uh, uh, which is not to say, the, the distinction between you and General Katumba is that I find it difficult to divorce you from the NRM. 
and by extension I'm speaking for millions out there even they, they haven't elected me mm. <laughs> you came with NRM I saw you taking oath to be an MP on 29th January mm. 1986 mm. and you were part of the 10 point program mm. so don't you feel unreal when you have to by law distance yourself from these yellow groups no, by yellow I mean no, President there's a, there's, a difference. there's a difference I know you like colors <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, and that's where <laughs> and that's where that's, that's the whole point you come you might even be deep in now no I'm, I'm, I'm go green <laughs> and, uh, it's good. Uh, and go green and, uh, this is a go green yeah gr green is the color God created okay. for us to live in the oh. whole world Okay, uh, and we are, we are tinting it with the blue sky. And the, the ah. sky and, and some little, and the white, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so I'm also sinking in here with uh -huh. the crowds. White and black are shades, they are not even colors. Okay. But now, when you talk of the yellow, mm. that is not the NRM that you are tying me with. Okay. The old and original NRA, NRM revolution. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Okay. Mm. NRA, NRA M M. revolution mm. is still continuing and right from when we started with guerrilla warfare to mobile warfare to conventional warfare to capturing power to establishing the NRM the, the, the movement system of government and to, to let and the people devoted to go into multi parties that whole process of that revolution and continuing where we have reached is part of our NRM revolution. Okay. The NRM or yellow is a party, a party. Mm -hmm. with the other parties that were established and those which were there. And because which the Ugandans are, which are very so. and, uh, and that's the choice of the people of Uganda. Yeah, that's what it the Ugandans wanted. It does Ugandans not wanted. separate me. It does not cause me any ill feelings mm -hmm. that the history of the NRM is continuing with the destiny, with the purpose, with the end state of establishing that freedom, that peace, that democratic situation, that stability, which has those roots and is continuing. As people have the freedom, those who want to go in their parties, of course it is legal now, to go there and enjoy them. And we work with all of them. And we are here to say, Ugandans, wherever you are, Enjoy that freedom. Let no one say, Denied. don't do this as long as you are not breaking the law. Okay. I will, for the meantime, think you have acquitted yourself <laughs> on that charge. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, you know, I say that I'm the one. You are the commander. Uh, General Katumba. Yes, please. I saw you in Parliament mm. in the pictures. Mm. Um, I didn't actually see the delivery, mm. <laughs> but I saw the move towards the delivery mm. and it has made a lot of news mm. if i had been the one uh, giving you some hiccups in the media i would have done it differently mm. but some are discussing that you should not have punched a tribesman <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's about to so, it that so i was wondering yes. if that fellow was yet so mm. then maybe you would be getting marks somewhere and then no, less no, marks no. somewhere mm. the question i want to ask you to address general katumba mm. As an MP, mm. um, and as a, a person who has now grown old, mm. there is this pressure building up mm. about young people mm. getting rid of Wazei. Mm. Mm? Mm. It is it is really exciting, mm. Mm? Mm. and uh, if you people who are schooled in the arts of violence <laughs> do, do, don't tell the people where that kind of thing might uh, lead us lead us mm. then we shall have ourselves to blame mm. how do you plead <laughs> thank you very much uh, let me start with you, where you're starting and you can see the, the the you know the challenge that we, our country still has mm -hmm. that even my uh inappropriate action as I would say, mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, as a result of the environment which was there at that time, can be narrowed down now into tribal. Mm. Oh, yes. You can see the, mm. 
Yeah, right? Shallowness. You can see the shallowness that we are leaving the big picture to go into travel. First of all, I can say this without uh, uh, without without any any, any reservations mm. that uh, my inappropriate action was not had no malice of thought. Mm. It came uh, as a result of Friday. the confusion which was happening there. I had no any grudge or anything against Zake or any of the others. But as they say, a mistake which humbles you is better than a, an achievement which, uh, which w w w that, that makes you arrogant. Uh -huh. So that mistake which I did because everybody said, you are not, this is not like you. <laughs> but you could M see. Maybe they don't know you. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, but but no, you, could, yes. you see, you see I, I, I can tell you this. Mm. If, if I had that situation the way it was, it was like I would have found a young man defiling a, a kid. I would react to the same. Mm -hmm. Because this was total defiling of the house. The, the parliament, which is one of where, you know, we talk about three arms of government, mm. which, is, which are they, we, we all know them. And parliament is one of the most strong arms of government. Now, this was like an attack on the state, the image of the, the, country. Image of the country. Yes, I reacted badly. I'm, I can say it, I sincerely apologize. And I did apologize because I even went and apologized to the to to Zake mm -hmm. and we mended fences. But I think let's not try to find scapegoats by bringing tribal connotations mm -hmm. by bring Identity. identities. No, that what happened on that day was a bad blemish on the image of our country. If I was part of the contribution, then I, as I said, I apologize to the Ugandans. Yeah. But, but, for whatever happened, all those who did anything in that house on that day, we, we owe it to the Ugandan to apologize. Now, yes, you could see one of the things which, are, of course, we have been debating, and I, dis I discussed this with even other members. I said, we, I think we made a mistake also as a country, mm -hmm. because including you, the media, and, and I'll not, I'll not, Excuse I'll not take you out of this. Let me represent them. Yes, as you read the judges. Yes, because <laughs> when this thing happened the first day in the house, yes, we should have come out strongly to condemn. But what happened? On the waves, in the papers, it was round one, defeated. Mm. Now, what did that mean? We sent a message to these young actors, <laughs> the, the vibrant hot blood, mm. that actually what they were doing was very good. So they came the second time. More prepared. More prepared. And you say, round two. Mm. I also saw them scoreboard. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what this, <laughs> the third one now, yes. and I can tell you this, uh, if for that day the speaker had failed to hold that house, tell me what would have happened. I shudder to can imagine. Tell, yes. If the speaker had been chased out of the house on that third time, the third time, Maybe we would have abolished parliament. <laughs> well, so maybe, but that maybe. is that what but was needed? Is that was it needed? So are you it saying that require. there's a possibility that people were experimenting with something whose end they did not even know? Exactly. Now let me tell you. Yes, sir. You know, uh, some people don't know that in security, mm. when somebody first of all says something. You listen, mm -hmm. and the antennas go up. When somebody acts towards that initial statement, mm -hmm. you then increase the alertness. 
Mm-hmm. And when they did it the first time, and they, as he's saying, they, they were talking round one, mm-hmm. we have a succeeded stop parliament from Proceed. deliberating. However few we are. Yeah. I don't even like you to continue repeating <laughs> these mm-hmm. scenes. They are embarrassing. And yeah, annoying. maybe embarrassment is a good lesson also. And annoying mm-hmm. to see that first, even on the first day, if people are blaming General Katumba uh, uh, second day. On the, on the first third time, day on the third day, I was, I was, I was trying to hold people from fighting. And uh, you could have seen uh, uh, Honorable uh, 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 Honorable Biakwaso holding a chair Chairs. in the air. Yeah, we, we, you have, know? we have the, the so very rich footage. Really. But the second, what I want to tell you, what I was saying, the process mm. of verbal threat, press, by physical. press briefings on that we shall even lift the speaker from her chair, mm. followed by the first day, and I have been telling people that on that second time, on the, on, the, on, the, on the third time, the last bad day, I had spent a whole day trying to ask all these people, one by one, is this a do or die matter? Do you have to take our country to this level you are planning to do? And they were saying we shall do everything possible to ensure that there is no debate. Actually, you can even ask one time if you happen to get uh, Colonel Kraje. Mm. Ask him what happened with the, between him and Zake outside the parliament before the parliament. Before the you are on notice. I'm <laughs> going to ask <laughs> yes. you what really happened. And I'll how, make him lay it how, on the table. How Zak, the, the, you know, he, he was, Zake was working himself working up. Working himself up. Mm. To do and, everything. And, you know, uh, the rest will, maybe you will say. But uh, again. Yes, yeah. or on that generation war. Yes, uh, on the generation war. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it is something which we, uh, we the, 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 I don't really like the way it is happening. Mm. Because this is not a war of biology. It's not biological war. It's not a, mm. a war of biology. You are old, I'm young. No. Between young and old. Mm. That, that's not the, how we can. We can, I would follow you, not because of your age. I will follow you because of your ideology. Okay. Mm. What are you bring to the table? What a I microphone in, stand. Yes. the issue. What are the issues? Mm-hmm. What I bring to the table? For example, you know it is when you're out of this system it's, and you're looking at it from that from an angle, mm. it's very easy to blame. Oh yeah. And this is what we see. Blaming is easy. But tell me, if there is no employment, what's the magic bullet you're bringing to change that? Get rid of Waze. Get <laughs> now, if you get rid of Waze, mm. how many Wazes are there and how many youths are there? Is that the magic bullet? No. Would that change? Would that, would that improve employment? So, we, we, uh, me, I would advise the young people. We, we appreciate the energy. We appreciate the vim. We appreciate that, yes, it is their time. But they also need to be better organized and discuss issues and be able to teeth out those issues and not just be driven by we go, we go, we go mob. <laughs> we go, we, we go. go. Yes. You know, like when we are going, there are things which unite us and we should go. Mm, like when we are going to Namboli, yeah, there we go. They for, say for we go, we go. With the current. The current is unite us, mm-hmm. make us patriotic, make us feel great as Ugandans. But when, as I have been giving this example, when you are told we go like they told the Egyptian young people to go to Tahirir Square. Mm, Tahirir. One million. And they all went without organization, without leadership, without, without structure. ideology, without any structure, without any plan of, li- of how to manage affairs. And uh, M- President Mubarak had to say, I, I don't want to, be, to take the blood of these children and I go aside. And the whole, and I'm saying this as an example. This we go, we go, we go. And I hear already some sounds of young people, all of you, you have never seen another leader. These can, I have been giving the example of sand. 
Mm-hmm. When you hold a lump sum of sand and you splash it mm-hmm. against anything, each particle disappears in its air. But, and what happened was when the, that, that there was that virtue, that's the only thing which could stand in the gap was the Muslim Brotherhood, who were had a re, an ideology, who had a leadership, but were not prepared enough even to govern the country properly. And they ended up also being uh, removed. So young people, please don't be deceived into the we go, we go, we go on WhatsApp and what. Without us, that's why we are here to discuss that the long process mm. of the struggle you are telling me about yeah. has been involving at every stage of has been bringing in young people, young people, young people, who of course grow up to our age. We all started as young mm. people. <laughs> now the ones we who were, not were born old. even <laughs> the ones who are climbing the tables of parliament, yes. who are breaking microphones, yes. studies have shown that most of them were, were were less than forty years. All of those, most of them, mm. were young who have recently, mm. because of the continuous process of growth, well. of the whole struggle and revolution, of our process of our long term mission which we have been continuously working for, organizing for, training for, involving other people, young people in, which has been going very well, now being disrupted by the young people themselves. Now, um, for those who may not know, Jeno Tumwine here took charge of Uganda as army commander when he was 32 years old. If there had been an age limit for army commander <laughs> at that time. Mm-hmm. Then we would have reminded you after five years of struggle that aha, now that you are here, your age does not allow you. Then the other thing which I always joke about and seriously, you are partly to blame for, for these youth problems. Mm. Before you and your way came, there was a very powerful check on the number of youth. These were the six killer diseases. Mm. <laughs> there weren't many youth. Those who were <laughs> many, they were lame. <laughs> so there was a good check oh. on, on the level of diphtheria, whooping cough, <laughs> measles. So you started a struggle against this, uh, with the result that now there are so many youth. Then you educated them. I think which is another mistake. No, no. No. You see those bad examples. I I, I, I totally (laughs) disagree. (laughs) And and let's not walk that direction. Okay. I I withdraw it that (laughs) meantime. (laughs) But let me again, let's go for a break. In which break I'm going to show you, the viewer, the kind of army which these two officers have nurtured over the years. And this one will show you why it is important to listen to these gray haired men. Let's look at a pass out that occurred here in 1986 and look at what the National Army was at that time. After the final assault, the President inspects them as they are ready to charge again guess the enemy position is not yet cleared. This is one section of a platoon which stays behind as a support and the president is in the background watching the exercise as they go on of the soldier trainees in the Kabamba wing. Commander comes to report to the president. Excellency, passing out parade mounted by 300 NRA recruits training school Kabamba. Three officers, 15 senior ensigns in open orders. Presidente 
president inspecting guards mounted by officers and NRA recruits at Kabamba training wing during their passing out parade. There are 300 recruits here passing out today, three officers and 15 non-commissioned officers. <laughs> yes, sir. Actually, thank you for bringing our history. That when I took oath to uh, do. And, and uh, thank you for keeping the records. Mm -hmm. Because you sometimes bring us back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. I've yes, been sir. telling people about the four important aspects mm -hmm. which has marked our journey. Mm -hmm. And we are sure of the destiny. Mm -hmm. Where have we come from? Where yeah. have we reached now? Where do we, we want, want to, to go, go and, and how, how do we, we want get to there. go there? And I want to tell you that while you saw those shoeless, uniformless, mm -hmm. Eh? Mm -hmm. young people. Did you see the president's umbrella? And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in whatever situation, in whatever circumstances, Ugandans which are watching this program, that shows for you young people especially who are very uh, anxious and excited about this, uh, this cloud of this Toji Kwata called business, uh, that we have come all that way, steadily, surely, deliberately, organizing young people, focus. organizing to ensure the stability, the calm, the peace, and the development and transformation of this country. And it is continuing. It is not, it's not something that can just Entity. That will be thought and you, uh, make you guys think the world, the country is going to be mm. uh, on fire. We've been planning, organizing, teaching, recruiting, educating, and doing it with the population, mobilizing the people, uh, so yeah. that we have a situation mm. where there is free debate, free discussion. There is no need to fight at all. And and uh, yes, and uh, let me just add something. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes. I've, be, I've had some of the, the energetic, uh, uh, over ambitious young, young people saying Uganda is moving in reverse. Mm -hmm. That we e. are, yeah, that we are moving. Uganda tumbled uh -huh. Now I think it's very good that you bring this, uh -huh. and then possible at one time you are going to show us where we are. Oh yes. And we didn't reach there by mistake. It re we went. We have gone there through what he has talked about. Those young boys you saw who came out at that time without any kind of you know with the minimal facilitation mm -hmm. they're the people who put their lives online fought and defeated the conies and laquenas and all these the 26 rebel groups mm -hmm. which have which 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 have disturbed this country since 1986 mm -hmm. to create the environment today mm -hmm. which everybody can 
and which we want that everybody should be free to participate. But you talked about uh, uh, the diseases and, and you reminded <laughs> me <laughs> of, of, uh, of a DP man eh? one time, no, I think it was a UPC guy, uh, yes, in, in, in Tungamo. Mm -hmm. One time there was a, about, I think it was about 1990 there, and said, you see you people, I've told you NRM, NRA, NRA, NRM has killed many people than UPC did. Mm -hmm. And the people said, how? Mm -hmm. He said, do you see this road from Tungamo to Kampala? Mm -hmm. During UPC, it used to take us 10 hours. Yes. So you'd drive slowly, pole, pole, mm -hmm. slowly. There were no accidents. Uh -huh. But now, Yes. Every other day there is an accident. Yes. Isn't, isn't that uh, why, so don't, so why don't you so plead yeah. guilty? So, so, so you can imagine, you yeah. can see how people think. Yes. Yeah? But Not, one thing again, uh -huh. which I would want to really, f which I feel um, betrayed about, mm. is the tone of messages which are bordering on promoting hate. Yes. Mm and disunity, mm -hmm. yeah. which are going unchecked. Give me one example of such a message. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There are messages. Mm -hmm. There are people who have gone on television mm -hmm. and said, NRM is killing people. Yes. I could not believe. I could not believe that they are killing, they are finishing people NRM. Only from the history, in fact, there would not have been any change, any transformation if we did not stop government or state-inspired violence against the people, government killing people. Mm -hmm. if, and only people, if they died in the, uh, the revolution, is always on battle. Yes, those who died in battle during the World War, those who died in the battle, during the Konyi and Counter the Yakuena county insurgency. Mm -hmm. Yes, some people died, but in battle. But the whole transformation that took place of establishing a new type of armed force that is now the great mighty UPDF, a reliable uh, Pan-African force, is because of stopping that and the discipline that it took and the uh, code of conduct that it ensured. That's one part. The mm -hmm. second part, mm -hmm is how the the, 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 the the comfort and the stability it created for the in the minds of the people that the UPDF has become so friendly, is so pro people and therefore and is from the population. Mm -hmm. You know when I see people saying the young people, if you want to know where the young people have been <laughs> and are well organized, it is the UPDF. It's the biggest family. The biggest family that has all levels the old the young the middle aged the families the children our grandchildren it's a huge family now when you add on the other security agencies also which have been accordingly also been mobilized and trained and then you put the millions of peace loving ugandans mm -hmm. you know people are getting worried that the, the, the situation is going, going to go out of the hand the millions of free of, of peace loving ugandans and many young people who are patriotic, who, are, uh, 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 who love the country, are there to ensure, and we are saying, UPDF, other security organs, the millions of free, of peace-loving Ghanaians, we cannot allow the country to go I into chaos. And, 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 and just and, because and, somebody and is excited about his political line. Mm -hmm. and, and why? Gino Katumba, you were, uh, first make that point, okay. because I was taking you back to I wanted to ask you, who do you want to take charge of combating these hate things? Mm. Uh -huh. But first make <laughs> your point. Who, whom, whom do I? Yes, who hate. will take charge of? Because those things go unchallenged. And Th that's true. Since uh, now but everybody. But you see, mm. the, 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 I don't know. I think everything I think has pros and cons. Uh -huh. I think that the, the, you said we, we created this environment where youth grew. Yes. But we also created another environment uh, where everybody who sits behind the mic has become a broadcaster. A broadcaster and yeah. a journalist. Yes. Anybody sits and behind the mic, uh, even he comes from his comedy and come without even researching on some of the programs he's going to present, and there he is.
Yeah. Now, <laughs> my concern is that if we don't, people like uh, you know the general to and the gray haired and the bold people, mm -hmm. if we don't come back possibly to guide our youth, just like in the home, mm -hmm. if you don't guide your children in the home, mm -hmm. then uh, you know don't blame what happens tomorrow. So I think it's our responsibility. Yes, we may not be listened to. They may out of ten words they may hear one, but let them hear that one. We need to to guide the youth, so that they understand that this country belongs to us all. Yes. The young, the old, the middle-aged, and the rest. But because now, if, you are, if you are, your approach is to threaten those who are above 50, mm -hmm. <laughs> so then what will happen? I don't think that's, actually, that's a good approach. I want to pick it on that. Yes. Yeah. He's raising a good, very good point and related <laughs> to what you are asking. Uh, let me first issue a warning order mm -hmm. to the viewers. Yes. By virtue of the authority interested in me, I'm going to borrow some time, some few more minutes for this program, mm. by virtue of the authority now interested in me, for the sake of the conclusion of this debate. Mm. Honorable Katumba, proceed. Yeah, as I was saying, we, we, if, if we, you see, we, 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 we have got these lessons, but sometimes we lose sight of them. Mm -hmm. What happened in Rwanda yeah. was a result of irresponsible media. Mm. Well, am I right? Mm. You are right. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. And Rwanda is still recovering from what happened. Now, what is happening now with the way the media is handling this situation and, yeah. the, and the way it is fueling the, the heat, <laughs> which, is, which is even artificial, mm -hmm. could be dangerous to this country. So I think while we are talking about who is responsible, all of us should be responsible. Okay. Even you, the guy in the studio, if somebody <laughs> comes in and says something which is not building the nation, mm. which is not building unity, which is not promoting love, which is not promoting the well-being of everybody, please stop him. That's not where we would want to go. No. Because me, I believe that, yes, Uganda, we may be small. We may have 37 people, but London, I mean, UK has how many people? How about 110 million mm -hmm. and they are not it's not bigger than Uganda so there is still a lot of things we can do for this country together okay what, what keeps us together mm. helps us to move forward mm. than what keeps us apart because now you see you, you, you go to read some of the things that uh, uh, somebody has lost an eye because he was told you kwata ko, you kwata ko. Yeah. Actually, the policeman who lost an eye was neither. Yeah. Yes, uh, he so was neither. And, that, and, that, and the, the, the enmity you create, even amongst yourselves, with the red ribbon and the yellow ribbon and mm. green ribbon and what, you know, is not constructive to the nation. Now, the... the, 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 the we are getting to the end of this. Now, having said all this, the problem is a man called Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. All the protagonists in this are scattering around the borders. One side is failing to say openly that we have no problem with the age, but this one should not participate. Mm -hmm. They are failing to say it. The other side is also pretending that it is really not. Uh, is, but I want to get back to a few years ago when General Yoweri Museveni retired from the <laughs> army. And uh, one of the people who made a presentation uh, could not have said it any better. He might have changed his opinion now, but just let's take a look at this. <laughs> You are the first officer to attain that rank in the People's Army, and you clearly earned and well deserved that promotion. Today is a historic moment because, as the Army Commander said, this is the first time, I believe, in the history of Uganda that we are having a serving officer of the Defense Forces who is also a sitting president of the country voluntarily retiring from the force. Retirement is ordinarily a milestone occasion in the life of the retiring soldier, his or her family, and colleagues in uniform. 
In the case of R001, General Yoel Museveni, however, it is, in addition, a milestone occasion to the whole country and beyond. It is therefore right to reflect on his past service to this nation and to the UPDF in particular. Usually, the military develops its leaders from recruitment in schools and or from universities, training in military colleges, and through assignments of duty. Mr. Museveni and his military prowess, however, developed differently. He was a product of the history of Uganda. The political conditions and circumstances of Uganda of the day, conditions and circumstances of dictatorship and fascism, forced Museveni to take up arms for the liberation of this country. The history of the struggle is well known to all of you and was well elaborated in the speeches before me. Suffice it to say that it was Mr. Museveni that led a few other compatriots in founding and leading the liberation movement that waged a successful protracted people's struggle that liberated Uganda from fascist and dictatorial regimes. He led the national resistance movement in the restoration of political stability, respect for human rights, national unity, peace, security, law and order, constitutionalism, and the rule of law in Uganda. As a colleague and a comrade in most of the time of our struggle for freedom, I can personally testify that General Museveni's predominant sentiment has always been a deep devotion to the cause of humanity. A strong antipathy against oppression of any type and an ardent wish for the people's freedom everywhere. He loves his country and burns with a zeal for its advancement and prosperity. I congratulate you, Mr. President, and thank you for a job very well done. You've proven through the many years of armed struggle and in the post-liberation Uganda that you understood people and how to motivate them and lead them. I feel honored to be in the presence of a man who has served and sacrificed himself for our people's freedom. I marvel at your raw courage and your willingness to constantly train and prepare to fight the wars that cannot be prevented. Uh -huh. yes. Can we have where UPDF is? You showed us where we came from. Um, and and, and, and uh, you have also given a clip where after preparing it to a certain level, mm. the commander in chief retires from active service. Yes. What kind uh, of army did he leave behind for the nation? I have a clip where you were actually concluding. Mm. It was you when you were CDF. Mm. Uh, maybe my people can look it up very quickly, which we should wind up with. But mm. yes. I told you that the problem was you were him seven. That's what I wanted to uh -huh. say. You <laughs> see, the moment mm -hmm. you leave and that is very important for everybody to understand. Mm. The moment you look at the national issues and, individual. and you start from national issues and the destiny of the country to identity. To <laughs> yes. Identity of either an individual, mm. of either the young against the old, or the of color. either the tribe against another, or either the party against another, or either religion <coughs> against another, even going to the extent of trying to say these are security people, these are these are, uh, 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 politicians, these are the moment you want to, the moment you start going towards emphasizing identity in conflict with the national destiny, with the national mission, with our historical mission. And the national interest. And you are not looking at the situation in a historical perspective, which I have said how the journey has been and where we are going when we are talking of the transformation of the whole of Africa now and the integration as the strategic, for, for, for Africa's strategic security. And you want to limit the whole matter on an to individual. an individual. Mm. 
If it is in a family, then Uganda is a family. And that's the best focus. example I want to give. And I want to ask everybody who is watching. Mm -hmm. And each one, I hope, has a family. Tell me, when a family, when the head of the family mm -hmm. becomes old, mm -hmm. does he become a problem, like you are saying? Does yeah. the father, does the head of the family become a problem because he has got grey hair, because he has become bald headed? May, may I add, it, add on, please, before you come in? Please. Does that now explain mm -hmm. why we see the youth, the young people, killing their fathers for, for land and property? Yeah, you see, you see the, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes, uh, there's also a problem because of, do, of, do of people see, Do they see the old as old. a problem? No, I was coming to that. Mm. I was coming, I wanted to say, mm. you see, because if we don't take Uganda as a family, you know, all nations which we call great have, up, if you go to India, they, they have a man called Mahatma mm. Gandhi, yes. the father of the nation. Mm. If you go to Tanzania, you'll find Mahatma yeah, Gandhi. Julius Nyerere. Mm -hmm. If you go to South, South Africa, Africa you Mandela. see Nelson Mandela. If you go to Zimbabwe, you will see Robert Mugabe still there, mm. the father of the nation who has taken them through thick and thin. And when you come, even to the case of Uganda, does has this is this man a problem for you? Yes, I. Those who are saying he he is the problem, yeah. it seems. What has he stopped you from, from doing? doing? Let, let me answer it yes. for them, yes. because I meet them. Mm. The only way of getting you with him seven off the ballot paper mm. is by ensuring that we don't amend. Because as long as he comes back, mm. he's likely to win. Now, let me, now, now, let me cut you short. <laughs> uh -huh. You see the people of Uganda. Mm. I, you, I like going to reminding people about the struggle. Mm -hmm. The biggest struggle that was put in the constitution mm -hmm. are mainly two. One on the power of the people, Article 1. Mm -hmm. The other one on democracy. The, yeah. Ensuring that the people of Uganda, I was reading the answer of the, of, the, of, the, of the constituent assembly when they were debating this question. There were very clear good arguments of many people uh, like John, uh, Dr. Kabayo, who I say, who argued very well, and they were supported by very many people in that committee, committee two of the of the uh, constituent assembly, saying as long as the people, including Besige, who are mm. saying as long as, as the, the people, people wish. of Uganda have the right to be the ones to choose mm. who will be their president through a free and fair election. Let's not deny them. There should be no, that's enough. They are the ones who will say, they even, they even talked about, somebody talked about, I think even, you were saying, even the education of education, it should be the people who will say that this man, I think, is not educated enough, and they will refuse. Okay. And that principle overshadows the, the fact that the people of Uganda on one man, one vote in a free and regular elections of choosing who should be the president cannot now become the issue, become a problem that there is fear that they may choose that man again. <laughs> that will be the people of Uganda to decide choosing whoever they want to choose in a free and fair election. So when you make it, that becomes a problem. When you go to identity of the individual, mm. when you go to the identity of your tribe, mm. when you go to the identity of your age, when you go to mobilize people, that these, I have been telling members of parliament, and I want to repeat this, that you who are saying, dead good must go, and that's why I normally cancel them when they have just <laughs> come to parliament. Mm. I say go carefully. Did these, I tell you Jenot Mwina is the longest serving MP? Yes, uh, by, by the British uh, one years law, of uninterrupted. I am, I am the father of the house. <laughs> the longest <laughs> continuous serving member yes, of parliament. Yes. And mm. and it helps them. I say if you want what don't threaten the old, they are very dangerous. And I use those words. They are powerful, they are experienced, they are entrenched, Exposed. they are in power, they know it. So what you do, befriend them. And I'm telling this to young people wherever you are. Befriend the old people so that there is harmony, there is trust, and there transfer. is confidence, so that the old people feel transfer. confident that they can transfer to you, as, it has, as is happening. But that's why I'm saying, mm. this parliament, the 10th parliament, mm. see the age, and it is very exciting. 
to see that young people are coming and they have been coming now those who actually were young when they were coming in now they are mature were the ones who, who are now under threat <laughs> huh? because when they came in after 10 years or 20 hey, the young ones mature. are seeing them getting uh, gray hair uh, actually I always tell people you are uh, coming you are coming where we are going where we are coming, we are coming from. from yes mm. who, that's why i started this association of the gray head and bald headed which i'm joining because mm. everyone eventually mm. will join there mm. so don't create problems roadblocks where you are going instead let us find harmony. The banyankore say etene mukuru again wawira. Translate. I translate meaning <laughs> that where there is no old person, mm -hmm. you will always get lost. You will go and you will not know the directions. So we want, let us create harmony between the old and, and the, the young. young, between the parents and, and the, the children, children. Mm -hmm. between the middle-aged and the young ones and the old ones. The, f the other day I launched togetherness movement. Again. As long as there is and this is not political, this is uh -huh. even <laughs> common day life. Mm. Eh? Mm. Again, at every level, there are in many things that unite us than those which divide us. Okay. There are those which unite the young and the old. There are those which divide, which unite the, 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 the educated and the uneducated. There are those which unite those who are, in, who, are, who, who are in business and those who are not, which unite us. As a nation. And that is, our, that is why I share with General Katumba. Mm. We've been together since Spain in, uh, in, in Monduli. Yes. To date, I have never, in a single day, and I can say it for you to understand, I have never found any reason that is between us for whatever reason. I don't even know whether he, are you a Catholic or <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> But I, I you want to know. I, 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 no, I don't <laughs> care. We, when it is Catholic Church, we go like we, we go. are going for general cutters. Mm. When it is, we have no problem, and we experience that from our struggle in the to ensure that it does not matter your background. We, our interest is our country together. Together we win. Maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe um, uh, Mr. Wana, we could, we, if if it was possible, I, and it's not. We could make people understand more. How have we been able to build UPDF, mm. which has got, you know, all, 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 shades, all shades of people, all. Let's strengthen we have the National uneducated. Leadership Institute. We have the uneducated. Mm -hmm. We have the educated. Mm -hmm. We have the the short. You remember when the, the, during I mean, the, those days of recruitment, you had to be forty two inches chest and six feet tall. Yeah. This time, even the shortest man is how the, uh, that is something which you should look at, because when you look at UPDF, it's a proof. It is that's the nation. It's 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 like one of the strongest pillars which show you what national hood is. is one Just a moment. The Let <laughs> me see if I can comply with your earlier request. Mm. Let's look at your PDF now. Today. Wow. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And those who are seeing <laughs>
assets. Few as they are, they are a good beginning. And in the words of Oliver Twist, some more. Your Excellency, I think you must be a very proud one to see your strategic vision of modernizing the UPDF coming true. We have witnessed, for example, the Air Force moving from a mere air arm of a few helicopters to an Air Force with this capability. That's a very big achievement. And sir, thank you very much for the steadfast guidance on these matters. The capability and capacity displayed today is a testimony and a message to all those who had doubts about our, our ability to defend our nation, that come what may, whatever challenge will come towards us, we'll take it up, and take it up with all the energy and the effort we'll be required. <laughs> Me... Now here is let a Geno. The Geno oh, is oh. there eating <laughs> things. <laughs> let me tell you something. Oh, oh, I wanted to you to find to w one of these days to. Uh, it's not for today, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, what uh, going back to what Geno was talking about, especially about the house. Mm. One, I came to be thinking. Do you? F maybe you could ask these the politicians. Mm -hmm. Is it high time that we have two houses? Yes, I had a discussion with the Mosey Henry Chamber mm. a few weeks ago, mm. and he had that proposal. And and, and the, the the reason I'm saying this, mm. we have the the, the grey-haired, the bold people, the mature yeah. people, yes, with the very constructive ideas. Mm -hmm. But if the kind of parliament we are going to be running mm -hmm. is the parliament of today, yes, some of those people may be where you are now. Intimidated, <laughs> intimidated, mm. uh, oh, not even intimidated, but find it difficult to debate. True, because I, I, in the past, and, and this because the, this this is not about opposition and pro. Mm. You remember we had very good uh, people uh, in debating. When you look at the people like uh, the uh, Kulo Park, yes, you remember the mm. the Kulo Park, mm. Ben Watcher, mm. Ben Watchers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those were people who are uh, that uh, they were in the opposition, mm. but when they would stand to speak. You would listen. Everybody would go. Yes. For the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, I pity my mother, Honorable Cecilia Ogwal, in this kind of environment, she's, she's whether she will be able to debate. That's why uh, I'm asking. I'm throwing it there. Yes. And leaving Thank you there. very much. And uh, <laughs> Geno Katumba, that should be your concluding remark now. <laughs> Geno, you are on the floor. My concluding remark yes. is that Ugandans, uh, East Africans, Africans, Let's look ahead at the strategic security of Africa. Let's look ahead at the stability and continuation of the peace of Uganda. Rather than a tragical article, you know an article, mm -hmm. one article mm. which is part of a huge constitution, which has many provisions mm -hmm. on how even to quarter or whatever. Yes. Let this issue not divert us from the long steady work of developing not only Uganda, but going to East Africa and Africa. Correct. I, I can share quickly that in 1983, I told my escorts mm -hmm. that you are going to be the instructors of the African forces. Which they have and become. And they have they become one of them is, gen, is gen, Major General Kavuma. Permit me. He has been in Central African Republic, he has yes. been in Somalia. Yes. He has, and uh, the other one is, 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 was a, is a brigadier in Rwanda. Another one is a Kano. They were just 83, as you were saying, without shoes and without what? Yes. Now, those who don't look far, young people especially, who are saying, oh, we have never seen uh, another and president. Mm. Let us also, mm. let us also experiment. Mm. Experiment mm. for your country? Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> can, we, can we chase our parents from our families because we don't have other if fathers? They, if they you last too fathers long, if, you want. <laughs> if they last too long, maybe there should be. Way. Well, <laughs> permit me to thank you, uh, Geno Tumwini and Geno Katumba, and I hope this is just the beginning. But can I also make an appeal, please? Yes. For all these people who are going to Jukwata, Jukwata, or whatever, mm. could they hold these meetings in the evening? 
not in the whole decent, day. In a decent place. And you start the, the, at you start at nine. The, the, the people have not gone to the gardens. They are just running, and you can see no, the, 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 the 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 negative impact of this continuous politics from. 2015, mm. we are in politics, politics, po when shall we work? You know, Katumba, you will answer that very quickly as we close. Mm. One side is determined to make sure that the government gets into as much trouble as <laughs> possible. <laughs> the, not really about consultations, but about fomenting the trouble. And the other side is trying to consult. <laughs> but I want us to close on a note that shows what the NRA UPDF was and is, I hope, mm -hmm. before we got into all this mix up. And when we see that, we shall just walk up. Let finally. Finally, without discipline. Without discipline mm -hmm. by the young people, without discipline by members of parliament. I want to tell the public even the civil servants. The only privilege and uh, which they enjoy and immunity is in what you say according in the to uh, article 97 not, not what, you do. what you do if ah. you commit a crime you should be charged and the police should quickly take you to prison without discipline at every level in primary school in secondary school out of university at in any civil job service. in civil service in the parliament in courts anywhere without discipline the future th those who want to disrupt it should be charged and dealt with sharply and we are tired.